Hello and welcome to Off the Press, the program where we tell you all that is in the newspaper. We try to make sense of it and dissect it. So this morning with me to do so is political analyst uh, Tubosun Akeju, uh, uh, reputation manager. <laughs> Sorry, reputation manager Tubosun Akeju. And then of course, political analyst, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Femi Idu Adeguke. Good morning. Good to have you. Good morning. Good to have you both uh, this morning. I saw the look on your face when I said political <laughs> analyst. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's stick to the line you like, which is um, um, reputation. reputation manager. I'm happy to say that. So we'll begin this morning with the Punch newspaper. And uh, the big story there is debt services uh, gulped $1.09 billion in nine months, according to CBN. And that story is on page 30, already displayed there on your screen. Thank you. And the border closure. Nigeria gets tough with ECOWAS. Bans uh, repackaged imported goods on uh, page 10. Federal government gives conditions for border reopening. Equal citizens must have passports. Situation terrible. Ghana laments six regional intervention. That's on page 10 of the Punch newspaper. Now we have a picture story here. Please rescue 259 from Ibadan House of Horror. That's on pages four and five. Uh, very disturbing pictures there, really. And then oil is gone. Embrace a Greek or passenger urges uh, Nigerians on page 11 of the nation's uh, news, the Punch newspaper rather, already displayed there. Lawan Clark clash over secret recruitment and severance, uh, severance pay on page 19. Ex PPMC boss to forfeit 2.4 billion naira property to federal government on mm. page 11. Now, flawed in federal government accuses Cameroon of breaching Lajo Dam. Uh, Dam agreement on page 13. And the policeman shoots laundry man for snatching colleagues' lover. What a story on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper, really. And Edo, Edo Crisis, uh, Deputy Governor slams Oshomele Group warns, uh, warns Obaseki. That's on page 13. Uh, oh, how come? Somehow I missed uh, the, the very top there, sorry. And it says, Federal Government opens Lagos about on road diversions December 15th on page uh, 29. A Supreme, Supreme Court rejects suit on ex CJ and on organs removal on page 14. Now, Buhari signs bill in UK, blames politicians and oil firms for tax losses on page 29. Court has killed 13 students in Kogi Varsity. That is on page 40. And IG, others appeal courts uh, restraining order on recruitment on page 14. Okay, so where do we begin this morning? So, let me start with you. Um, at the border closure. Mm -hmm. um, conversation has been on for a while now. I agree with you. And um, I think that it's about time we start to proper pro look at the pros and cons of it. Mm -hmm. um, while it's very easy to refer to how China did it in the past, we must understand that the dynamics of global economy has really changed. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the can, context is also yes, changing. Yeah, the context is, is, you know, is a bit different. Um, the closure of border is you know, it's interesting because like I, I once said on the program here, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have to be very careful because we do not produce a lot of the things that we consume in Nigeria. And the ease of doing business in Nigeria is still not at, you know, a very, very attractive mm -hmm. space. So we don't have some of the things that we attract well, we've the moved industry. From Fifteen points up. Yeah, we can pat ourselves on the, the back, but you know, there's a lot of work to mm -hmm. you know that we still have to do. Yeah, uh, and so we should not rely. So I haven't established that some of the conversations and some of the things that I read in the papers that the the, the, the minister of foreign affairs is asking for uh, are not completely out of place. Uh, you know, when you're asking that. Um, a lot of the goods that are coming from the ECOWAS co countries must either, you know, to an appreciable amount have been produced in mm. those countries and not that someone imported them to those countries and then just yeah. repacked yeah. them yeah. and then you bring it into Nigeria yeah. so that they use Nigeria as a dumping Don't be sad. Mm -hmm. But we also have to understand that while we have closed the border, we must put enough things in place to attract the, those things that we are coming. Um, are consuming in Nigeria. Else, mm. those things will become extremely expensive and then we would have a different kind of, uh, of problem. And I also, you know, hope that the public is well enlightened about the opportunities that are now, you know, 
existing wow. because of this border closure. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't take advantage of those opportunities, then it will be an effort in futility. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, if we are not able to meet the demands, because one way or the other, what I will find is way, yeah, <laughs> people true. will find a way to meet demands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just like to add, because it was said, where someone has said it on this uh, platform before, uh, about the cost, mm -hmm. demand and supply. Mm -hmm. What, like he said, what has the government or what have we put in place mm -hmm. to mitigate the adverse effect of this border closure? Like he said, there is a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. There's pros and cons. There's good news about it and the, the bad aspect that can affect the poor masses. Because some people have the argument that this border closure is to enrich the rich already. Because they are the one who owns all the rice farms. That's the, that's the news making the round. But having said that, the government needs to come and give the people assurance of where they're going, mm -hmm. of what the benefit on the long term, mm -hmm. the medium term and the long term the will be. Concrete uh, arrangements they have. I yeah. also like the fact that Tobosun pointed the lights on saying the need to um, use the opportunity to tap into what we have, you know, yeah. use it as a time to also create business, so to speak, for yeah, ourselves. Yeah, so it's, it's a good one. It's a positive side to look at. Okay. So having said that, um, what else is catching your attention? I want to uh, look at the statement made by President, ex-President Ambassador Joe, that mm -hmm. oil is good and mm -hmm. people need to embrace agriculture. Um, I'm not entirely sure oil is completely good. It might be on its way out, but we still have a long way to go. So do you yeah. think we st should still depend on it? I, I'm not saying we should depend on oil. I'm only saying that we'll beyond some, saying somewhere. that oil is good, we need to move to a place. And I, maybe we are very near it with, you know, the refinery by Dangote coming mm -hmm. up very soon. I think it's important. Sounds promising. But I think what we need to really talk about in the agri space is processing. And I think he said it in the body of work. It's just not in the headline. If we continue to focus on the production part of agriculture, mm -hmm. we will completely be at the losing end. Nobody is, we're not going to be able to fully immerse the benefits and the advantages that come in that sector if we continue to focus on just planting and harvesting. Hmm. We must have the industries and find ways to have, you know, to add value to agricultural produce that, you know, we have from farmers. And it has to be done, you know, in a very, very deliberate manner. Cassava is hmm. always a good example to use. We're one of, if not the first, or uh, the highest producing country when it comes to cassava, but we're not making the best out of it. Why? Mm. Because we do not pro process it for what can you know, bring the highest form of commercial value. We mm. use it for staple foods, fufu, gari, and the likes. Where you know, we can use it for its law. We can, the industry can you know, make a lot, a lot of use from cassava. We must come to realize that we need to solve the problems that is preventing us from taking full advantage mm -hmm. of the benefits that come in agriculture. But it has to start from a place of enlightenment where we say, oh, everybody move to agriculture. No, we're not asking you to just move to planting and harvesting. We're asking yeah. you to move into planting, harvesting, and processing mm. of agriculture. The advanced because stages, yes, so I to think speak. That, that has to be really, 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 you know, reinforced. And while that's been reinforced, we must look at the problems that is preventing you know, the, um, 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 that's preventing us from taking proper advantage mm. of, or making processing, you know, very, very much possible. Okay, yeah. thank you very much for that intervention. Okay. Yeah. yeah, just to oh. add, in a simple word, what he's saying, oil, oil is on its way out, like he said. Mm. You don't want but, to agree to the fact that it's gone. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's just close to the door, it's by the door. No, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's gone, it's not gone. The most but the problem is, in the world is still, yeah, our Marco is still. But because the because the mistake we made, because a lot of people will say, has oil been a blessing or a curse to Nigeria? Mm. But because we made ourselves a consumer nation, so we shouldn't make that mistake in this sector. And it shouldn't just be agri. We need to diversify our economy. We don't abandon oil and go to agri today and then leave other aspects of our economy. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying now is we have to close the loop. That's what you say. Close the loop on the agricultural development. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we go to the Vanguard newspaper, and uh, there it says Ojuku's the 
I don't know why I'm beginning with that, but anyways, <laughs> Ojuku, Ojuku's legacy is threatened under Obiano, according to his wife, Bianca, on page 15. I have no reason to believe that we are exercising enough financial discipline with regards to expenditure controls, but we must be wary of loans we cannot afford to pay back. Um, that's... Uh, May Lafia saying on page 31, now some judges uh, will still be corrupt if appointed from heaven, according to the Senate, or the choice of words, and that's on page 41. <laughs> now banks borrowing from CBN rises by 72% to 6.2 trillion naira in the third quarter of 2019. That story you find on page 19, full details of it. And then ex-presidents ask for tips to award contracts, according to the presidency, that's on page five. The records of some of his predecessors in office bespeak a uh, greedy trail. When they go abroad, they first ask, what is in it for me? Hmm? What is there for my family? President Buhari is different, according to Malam Garba Shehu. Please grab a copy and find out what this is about. Mayati Allah's call for headsman uh, settlements as panacea for peace in a state is a mistake, according to Obasan Jodai on page nine. And the late uh, Mopala Jun Johnson, I'm still speechless, but according to his eldest son on page eight, Oshibajo, Emefele, and Baba liking others for Oshun Economic Summit on page 10, Buhari signs amended deep offshore acts on page eight, and federal government list conditions for reopening of uh, the border. We'll just take one story from here. One or two stories. <laughs> Anyone <laughs> catching you? Anyone's attention? <laughs> um, talking about the same thing, almost? Um, no, no, no. The, the, on the, uh, what the presidency has come out to say. Mm -hmm. That's not, for me, it's not new. We all know what's been going on prior to this administration. And even within this administration, there have been some indictment. So they ask what is the some of them. Me? Yeah. To some of the members of the Executive uh, Council. Mm -hmm. And then on the Senate, they're saying the judges, if was appointed it, from heaven. Even if appointed from heaven. The even if the senators were voted from, from heaven. Wow. You know, you, know, you know, when I read that headline, I just started smiling. You yeah, smiled? Yeah, yeah, because it's why there is, as humans, if you do not have the processes and the system, exactly. you will do things in that way. The only reason you are stopping at the red light is because you have to stop at the red light. If the red light wasn't there, you will move. Probably yeah. just exactly. continue. So can we have regulations that we can keep and you know have you know checks and balances that will not make people corrupt? You mm. know? I think another headline there that I want to really is the issue of Meete Allah. The Meete Allah group is a ticking time bomb. bomb. They must the, the, the choice of words, even up to the media, the way the media reports the things that they say has to be critically looked at going forward. You cannot say that the condition for peace for some people is for their business to be subsidized. Mm. It is absolutely wrong. I think we have to critically look at it. It's a ticking time bomb. And I think that the attention they are being given is in the wrong, is, 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 is a wrong type of attention. We need to give them a different type of attention because they are becoming way more emboldened in their request and demand. And sincerely, we have to be really careful. I'm quite that vocal, group. So. Yes, we have to be really careful. And we at, it seems like everybody is scared of them or something. They can't be treated with kids' glove. Hmm. You know. Can be treated with kids' glove. Any thoughts on that? On that totally. <laughs> All right, we'll move on very quickly to the Nation newspaper. And ICPC seizes 2.4 billion naira from ex-PPMC ex boss, and 1 billion traced to his wife on page 8 of the Nation newspaper. And Oshiba, Jaime, and others are for the summit. Uh, you are safe, Lagos, Asha's resident. We need to really hear that. And Governor hates the security. That's on page 46 of the Nation newspaper. And of course, on Bayo San Kogi State's uh, upcoming election, Lokpobiri at Vice Leon Court rules November 14th. Give peace a chance, group tells electorate. Anek deploys three national co uh, commissioners. And this and more you find on page 10 of the Nation newspaper. More income as Buhari signs amended Deep Offshore Act. That's on the front page. You can see it there, but it's continued on page 8. And the federal government gives condition to reopen land borders. Uh, that's on the front page. And yet again, this picture story of uh, some victims of the Ibadan torture camp. Uh, this story, is, uh, th this picture is really disturbing. And then 259 of them freed in Ibadan torture, torture camp. That story again is on page uh, 4. 
of the nation newspaper, the suspected owner of the illegal correctional center, Al Alfa Ismail Olori, <laughs> after his arrest. Thankfully, he's been arrested yesterday, and there's a picture story there. And the main story is contained, is inside, on page four. Now, why Operation Am Amotekun? Am what does it mean? It's delayed. Amotekun is a tiger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So that's on page uh, 8. It's on the front page, rather. It's continuing on page 8. And 13 killed in Kogi Varsity Court Clash on page 5. And Jamba's parents over candidates' profile on page 40. Where do we want to start from? Um, uh, Lagos, the security situation in Lagos. Mm -hmm. I think beyond the promise, I think we have to see that, you know, things um, we have things in place to prevent, you know, the security issues that we're starting to have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the traffic robbery seems to be coming back. Mm -hmm. and, and the one chance thing. Yes. And, you know, there's, there's an increased number of that now everywhere. So, um, and I think the security forces, they know how to always, you know, deal with these things to re reduce it. Sometimes the presence of the security men on the media and in the express is sometimes enough to deter uh, serve as a deterrent mm -hmm. to traffic um, robbers, and that of um, because you know, they know they can't possibly do anything, yeah, so they, to speak. Yeah, they are, someone is going to go after them mm. that is not in the car and all of that. And also the issue of one chance. I think that there's a lot more intelligence that is required to nip them in the bud because at the end of the day, you have a finite number of people who are perpetrating that crime. Mm. And so I think beyond the reassurance, I think the security forces need to move very, very fast that into it. Okay, doctor. That's absolutely spot on because what he said is spot on because you don't come and just make statements and we cannot see anything physical on mm. ground. There's still roads that are so dilapidated, major roads, high roads, yeah. and you're not doing anything. And all these things, criminals, they take advantage. Yeah, true. They take advantage. And then, we, they should, like you said, there should be physical and intelligent process mm. for all these things to be brought to the barest minimum. Mm -hmm. we, we cannot do without criminals in our midst. Let's just be... <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's scary to say. <laughs> I beg you not to go further. We can't do without criminals. <laughs> you can do without them in your midst. <laughs> Anyways, we'll always we, be there. We, we just need to cop them mm -hmm. and handle them. Okay, so yeah. thank you so very much uh, to Boso and the Dr. Edo with there for coming to help make sense of this. And this is where we'll call it a wrap. We'll continue this tomorrow, same time, 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okui. Have yourselves a great day.